little windy. Can you hear me? Rollerblading or inline skating is a very enjoyable sport. It tests a lot of your balance while also being active, engaging your muscles. Something a lot of people enjoy doing, but it's not so common like biking or just running. And you also can't do it everywhere. You need somewhere that has a flat surface where you're able to glide with not a lot of bumps so you don't fall on your face. So these are my roller blades. I've had them for a few years now. On the right foot of your blade, there should be something on the back, which is a stopper, which I'll show you how to use. So some tips I've learned throughout the years of hardcore blading is that I like to wear two pairs of socks every time I rollerblade because it's really important to get, buy skates that fit your foot very well. Like they shouldn't be too tight or too loose because then you run the risk of getting blisters or it's just really uncomfortable or you might, it's more likely that you'll fall over. <laughs> so I'm a size six. I got blades and a size six. I've had these for years, but they're just like a little too big. And when I wear like ankle socks, it's more likely to get blisters or your ankle starts to rub against the blades there is padding like all over the inside but double socks i found to be the most useful so every time i blade i wear an ankle sock or any type of thin sock and then on top i put on a thicker sock that goes up higher For the thick sock, I like to fold it over, down again over my ankle twice, so it's extra ankle padding, you're more protected. So yeah, I'll do the same for my other foot. So yes, double padded ankles, double padded feet. So there's more cushioning. So depending on the skate you have, I think most skates are like this. There's a string to tie. There's a string to tie, like normal shoelaces. This Velcro strap to really strap your ankle in. And then this other ankle strap. That you can adjust make it as tight as you want so your blades are more comfortable ankle support is very important so i like to have my blades more snug onto my feet because then it's less likely to to just move around while you're blading you want it to be like a secondary foot with wheels on it <laughs> so Pull the straps tight and I like to double knot just in case don't want to trip on a lace while you're blading oof okay double knot it then I tuck usually the ears like into the side and the leftover pieces into the side of the blades then take the velcro strap there's a hook onto the side just tighten it just tight enough you know don't like suffocate your foot and your ankle but you'll see like once you start blading you'll realize what's more comfortable for you oh. so Finish off by strapping in your feet. They should fit snug and comfortable and they shouldn't be loose, but yet not too tight that they're cutting off any circulation. And if you have any safety equipment you wanna put on, like a helmet, elbow pads, or knee pads, you should probably put on the knee pads before your blades, but yeah, put that on. Now that you have both your blades on, you're ready to start practicing. 
don't go immediately on some concrete because you're, you're, you need to practice more balance before you actually start blading unless you're very skilled at your balance you can just immediately start so I would recommend starting on something like grass sand mulch something where you're not really able to blade practice walking take some steps feel what it's like to be on one foot at a time do that you can like start practicing the motion of what it's like to actually blade on some smooth surface so most times when you blade, it's more of like a slight squat position. Make sure you keep your back as straight as possible. It's mostly leg work. near a park like a like an actual park the kids can like climb up and stuff and they have this music thing they click buttons and then music starts playing and it's just it's just too loud too many like moms again like oh my gosh what is that girl doing so on my way to somewhere more secluded to teach you how to blade I started blading when I was I don't know, probably like 10 years old. It was one of those sports that not a lot of people did in my area. I kept like want I kept wanting to like join a rollerblading team, but every time I would look it up, it would just be a bunch of old people, you know. It wasn't something that kids did. So most times I just ended up rollerblading by myself. I taught myself just from doing. Yeah. And I think it's a really great sport. Like, you know, I'm not really that much of an active person. Ooh. But rollerblading was one of those things like I could just really keep up with. It never bored me because Nowadays, every time I go blading, I go really early in the morning. It's a great start to your day. And I like to listen to like an audiobook or just be with myself. Cause you know, I like to just be with myself in silence. Some people might think that's weird, but I don't mind. I haven't met many people who also rollerblade, but I would like to. <laughs> Can you rollerblade with others? I, I don't know. Number one, place your legs hip width apart and get into a slight squat position. Practice pushing your feet outwards and back. This is the motion of rollerblading. Make sure your ankles are slightly loose. Practice balancing on each blade as sometimes you will be on one foot. Start with some small motions, feel what it's like to get some momentum and what it feels like to be rolling on blades. Then start turning your steps into smooth strokes, outwards and back. Practice the motion of transferring your weight from one foot to the other while gliding. Eventually your momentum will speed up and it will help you move forward quicker and smoother. This is what it will look like from a downward angle as you continue pushing one foot in front of the other. You should be barely lifting your skates off the floor just enough to put it in front of the other until you gain enough momentum and practice on other smooth surfaces.
So right now I'm about to take a left turn. So I'm gonna use my right foot and swerve it slightly inwards so that my body turns left. Your body inwards. When you wanna take a right turn, you're gonna use your left leg and turn that ankle inwards. So you're turning. I'll show you some film from a distance. So basically, you're going to be using your body to steer, to turn left, you lean left, also pushing out a little bit with your other foot. Then to turn right, loosen your ankles a bit and lean onto the right edge of both your skates. Here you can see the leaning motion a bit more. But just practice on your own and you'll get it. So one of the hardest things when you're learning how to skate is learning how to properly stop because if you don't know how to stop, you're gonna end up falling on your face. But it's actually quite simple. There's different, let's say like two ways that you can stop. Most times you skate, I'm pretty sure, they have this stopper on the right foot. So every time you put more pressure on the heel, you'll right here. Put more pressure on the heel, it'll like rip against the floor and it'll slow you down. And another way you can stop is literally while you're skating, you make a quick turn, which is more like the advance because if you take it too quick, you could fall over. But in general, I would say when you're starting off, when you're going slow, get used to using this so that you know how to stop when it's needed. And bonus, blading over bumpy and difficult areas. What I like to do, I like to just take it slow, take it slow. Keep your feet in line and slowly try to glide over it. If not, if it's too hard, just take a few steps and then you'll pass it. And if you find stairs, maybe take your skates off or try to go down sideways so you don't blade off. <laughs> 